Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to test your alternator to make sure it's working right. Some symptoms you might have with a bad battery or a bad alternator is that your battery light might be on on the dash, the engine's cranking slowly or won't crank at all, the battery seems weak, interior lights or headlights seem weak, a rumbling or squeaking noise is coming from the alternator, which indicates that there could be a bad bearing. These are symptoms of a bad alternator or battery. To see how to test a battery, check out my other video. The link is in the description below. This video is specifically for the alternator, and I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about how to test the alternator. So when you're doing this test, you want to set up your multimeter to DCV, which is DC volts, and you want to set it to something above 15, so 20 in this case. Here's the negative terminal and the positive terminal on the battery. You want to make sure these terminals are clean so that you'll get a reading when you do this test. So I'm going to put my black to my negative and red to the positive here. And you can see you want 12.6 volts or something around that. It could be a little bit lower, a little bit higher. That's not a big deal, but 12.6 is the magic number to shoot for. Now to see if the alternator is working properly, we have this attached and we're gonna start the car. And ideally what should happen is this should go between 14.2 and 14.7 volts and that means your alternator is running correctly and charging the battery up correctly. If you're getting over 14.7 volts, that means that your alternator is overcharging the battery and that could cause damage to the battery, so you don't want that. And then under 14.2, depending on how much under, let's just say 13.2, that means your alternator isn't strongly charging the battery. It'll still charge it because it's still above this 12.6 volts, but it's not gonna be enough to charge it when you run accessories such as your headlights and radio. Let's start the car so I can show you what I am talking about. So you can see it's running about 14.2 and that's exactly where we want it to be. There's a voltage regulator in the alternator that regulates the voltage that this should be at and 14.2 to 14.7 is exactly where we want to be and that's spot on. Again, if this was bad, it would be either below the 14.2 and 14.7 range or above. Now we're going to put a load on the battery and alternator. So we're going to turn the lights on, we're going to turn the radio on. I have off-road lights, I'm going to turn those on. And all that stuff together is going to put a load on this. And what we should see is this shouldn't drop too much. We want to make sure the voltage doesn't go below 13 volts. Now right now I have a lot of things on. I have four 100 watt off-road lights on. I have my headlights, I have fog lights on, I have the radio on, and I have a fan on. And with all that stuff, the voltage is still almost 14, which is great. We don't want this to drop below 12.7 with all that stuff on. But as you can see, my, my alternator is running great. And now I'm gonna shut off everything I turned on and you'll see this will spike back up. So now when we started I had 12.6 volts, when I shut the car off it should be higher than 12.6 and that means that the alternator is charging the battery. So we just shut it off and we can see that it, it's 12.9 volts, this is the surface charge. Eventually this will drop back down to 12.6. So if while doing these tests something doesn't check out, your voltage doesn't go up when the car is running or when you turn all the accessories on, the voltage drops below 13 volts. If that's the case, then we're going to check out a couple of things. First off, you want to check out the connections here. Take the leads off the terminals and sand it and get a really good connection because sometimes the connection isn't good and that'll cause the alternator to have a hard time charging the battery. Another spot to look at is the back of the alternator. Make sure all the wires are plugged in and secured. All of mine are plugged in obviously, but make sure yours are. And follow this and make sure that this goes all the way to the battery and isn't disconnected at all. Check for any corrosion, any damage to the wires, any frayed wires, any kinked wires. All that stuff could cause a problem. Also, your alternator might have an external voltage regulator. Check the wires to the external voltage regulator. Make sure that it's going there, make sure it's clipped in, and make sure the external voltage regulator is working. And finally, as the car is running, make sure that the alternator is spinning. Make sure that the belt is tight. You want to make sure your belt is tight on the alternator because that's how you get your power. Now the last test I'm going to show you guys is a voltage drop test for the negative and positive sides of the battery. First we'll test the voltage drop on the negative side of the battery. To do this test, go start the car, turn on a bunch of accessories. You want your headlights on, you want your blower fan on, your radio on, and then I'll come back out here and I'll show you. We're going to connect the black lead to the negative side of the battery, and then we're going to touch the red lead to the alternator case. You can see I have a bunch of accessories on, 
Off-road lights, headlights, fog lights, blower motor, radio. Get your black lead, attach it to the ground, and then take your red lead and you're going to touch it to the alternator case, the outside of the case. Make sure you have a good connection. When you get a good connection and you can see a reading, what you want to do is you want to go and raise your RPMs to about 1500. That right there is about 1500 RPMs and you can see the reading is 0.05. You don't want to see a reading that is 0.1 or 2 in that range or greater. If it's 0.1 or 2 or greater, then you have a problem. This is 0.05, so I'm good. Now let's just say that you get a reading that's 0.1 volts, right? So what you want to do next is take this and touch it to the bracket. And if you see a substantial voltage drop, that means the connection between the alternator and alternator bracket needs to be clean because the ground isn't good. Now if you don't find your problem between the connection of the alternator and the alternator bracket, then you should try the engine block. So you want to be careful because the fan is running. So I know it's hard to see, but I'm connecting it to just like a bare metal part on the engine block. And you can see it's 0.04. So again, I don't have a problem. It's not 0.1, it's 0.04. But uh, if you had a problem and you saw a substantial decrease in voltage from your alternator case to this, then that would be where your problem is. At that point, I would clean the connection between your mounting bracket and your engine block. And now if you don't find your problem here, the last spot I would check is your chassis ground. So you can see here's mine, it connects to the firewall. What you'll do is you'll take your red lead and connect it to the ground like that. And you can see, 0.06. Still the same. And remember to bring the RPMs up to about 1500 when you do all these tests. The idea is to keep testing the ground connections until you can find where the connection is bad. Once you find the bad connection, sand it, get it clean so that the connection is good and then hopefully that will fix your problem. Now we're going to test the voltage drop across the alternator and the positive side of the battery. To do this, again, all the accessories on, car running, you'll bring it up to 1500 RPMs, connect the red to the red, and then we're going to connect our black to the B plus post on the alternator. The B plus post has a nut and a post in there, so make your connection right on the end like that. Remember to rev up the engine to about 1500 RPMs when you check this. And now we're going to look here. You don't want this to be a, above 0.3 volts. So you can see mine's 2.8, so that's below 0.3, so I'm good. Now let's just say you're above 0.3. The next place you want to check is the nut right here. And if you see a substantial voltage drop, you know the connection between the nut and the stud needs to be cleaned. I'm good still, and there's no significant voltage drop anyway. And the next place you're going to want to check is the lead that's coming from the alternator into that wire. There's a metal piece. You can see it. it's in between the nut and the red there on the alternator. So just touch it in there, and then we'll come around and see. Still below three, and there's no significant drop, so I'm good. That's good to go. I know I don't have any problems with this, but that just shows you how to diagnose the positive side as well for voltage drop. Again, the idea of doing this is to keep testing all the connections until you can find where the connection is bad. And then once you find that connection, just sand it so it's clean and good and you're good to go. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. On the screen are going to be a few videos. The first one will teach you how to check the battery and the second one will show you how to check for parasitic draw. Remember to leave any questions or comments you might have. You guys come up with good tips and tricks and have good questions as well, which is great. Also consider subscribing. I publish how-to videos weekly that'll teach you a lot and save you money. Finally, in the description below are my links to my Facebook and Twitter sites, so check them out if you use Facebook or Twitter.